So here's the belt. I won't talk much about it. Um, it's made by Tough Built. You can get it at Lowe's. Um, it's it's a good DIY version kind of tool belt. Uh, it comes with these modular pouches. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into trying to sell you any of this stuff or uh, great detail. You can visit the Tough Built website or on Amazon. Uh, but essentially, that is the setup. I do have an extra pouch for a drill. And that's basically it. The way it works is these pouches clip into these attachments on the belt. So when you hear it click, it's in there pretty sturdy. You pull it out. You can switch these in and out. So I can pull this out, pop open the kickstand. Um, but anyway, they're pretty handy. Uh, it has a clip for the hammer. So we'll go through each one of these pouches. I'll show you what's inside. It's nothing exciting, uh, I can assure you. It's just the essentials. This is what I keep on me. I show up to every site with this. Um, I use everything in both pouches on a regular basis. I'm going to start with the bigger pouch first. Um, of course, you got to have your tape measure. This tape measure um, is produced by FastCap, sold by FastCap, and I'll shoot some close-ups, but for a person, uh, you know, of home use as well as a professional, um, it's got a nylon wrap, which means this is very slick and it slides very easy on the tape itself. And it's marked down to the 16th very clearly. You've also got a uh, area here where you can take measurements and write them on here. And it also has a built-in pencil sharpener. You also have a stop here, a lock. And you also have a temporary stop down here on the bottom. Very durable. Love it. I've got several of these in different flavors. But that's the uh, tape. And, and I, I just want to say... Before I move on any further, I am not here to sell anything. I don't get a dime for any of this. And I'm not going to go into great detail like I'm trying to advertise each tool. When I mention the name FastCap, please go to FastCap. Check their tools out. FastCap is incredible. They're, all, they're on Amazon. They have their own website. You can spend hours on the FastCap website. Uh, touching back on this tough built setup, it's really not for a professional. It'd probably be great for do-it-yourselfer uh, on YouTube and the manufacturer uh, Tough Built claims that this is uh, pro quality but it's not as far as it being built tough it's it's pretty cool I mean it's, it's built pretty well as far as these clips um, you can't see it in the in the video but I've this thing's worn out and I don't take these on and off that much when I when I get to the job site so then you have a square um, square is essential. I've got a medium size square and a small size square. And then I use uh, from time to time a uh, the old wooden crank out. And I get a lot of flack on that as well. But the main thing I like it for is taking inside measurements very accurately. So on the flip side of this tape, um, there's a slide out here. I don't know if you can see it. But I've got it right now on two inches. So you could butt this to like in, inside of a window, extend this out till it touches the other side, and then whatever that measurement is, add that, add this, let's just say it's two inches to 19, and that would be the, the width of the window. It's very accurate. Uh, these have been around for eons and eons. That's why I get a hard time about it. Um, I'm trying not to step in a fire ant hole here, sorry. Uh, then you have your um, pry bars, stainless steel titans. Um, these, everything I'm showing you can be purchased on Amazon. Um, these come in a set or you can buy them single. I get a set of four and they're good for uh, prying up uh, things uh, like nails. They're good for going in to trim and it's thin enough and sharp enough that it can get behind the trim if you're removing trim for instance to replace it. Um, it these are essential. I I can't live without that. 
uh, standard putty knife, flexible. A five-in-one tool. This is also known as a painter's tool. It's got a sharp edge, kind of a blunt rounded edge. It's got a um, scraper. Um, you can clean out like paint rollers. So you could take the roller full of paint and scrape it down like that. I'm not going to go into this. Please look this tool up. Uh, it was invented in the 70s and the person never patented it. Uh, so everybody eventually grabbed onto this. This is probably one of the most useful tools, you know, as a, you know, trim carpenter, as a homeowner that I've ever had. I mean, I've, I've used this thing. It, it's just been, so I can scrape up um, like caulk. I can remove paint. I can break a, a seal of caulk on a trim with this. Um, a thousand and one uses, literally. A level. It's got a magnetic edge on this side, which I never use. And then a standard level where you can see in the top of it. Very handy. Flashlight. Always have a flashlight on hand. I need to peek behind a door. Uh, there's no power on in the house. You know, we can always use that. Screwdrivers. I keep a small Phillips head and a large one. And I also keep a large um, flathead and a small one. I don't know where the large one went to. It probably fell out in the trailer. And then I use hole punches. I have a, a maximum hole punch, a large hole punch, and a small one. Um, these are great for, I was using them today, um, drilling in the bolts for a handrail on a newel post. And I measured, found center, and all that. And then make a pencil mark and then take this guy, put it on the pencil mark and pop it with a hammer. And then you have a small hole where the drill bit will not wander around. That, this is also another punch. And then a magic marker. You gotta have a magic mark in your tool belt. Um, you're gonna wanna mark things on the floor or on rough surfaces. And uh, the the pencil just not going to do it, and I'll show you the pencil types that I use. Magic marker. I, I usually carry two or three magic markers, and this is a really valuable tool to me. It's by Craig. Again, I don't get a dime, but it's a multi-mark tool, and really what I do is like today I was working on a three and a half uh, inch wide post, and I needed to mark the center. Now these posts, I found out as usual, aren't exactly three and a half. So what I can do is take half of three and a half, which is one and three quarters, and I can uh, open that up and lock that down. So then I would go to the right side of the, I don't know what side you're on. I'll go this side of the post, mark it, and this side of the post and mark it, and make sure that my mark is, is lining up But when I flip this. In some cases it's dead on, some cases it's not, so you'll have a little mark here and a little mark here, and you just bust that center of where those two marks uh, are. It's got a level on it, I've never used it. A lot of use this really does. Um, the big use is on the back side of this. You can watch my um, door trim videos or my window trim videos, and I go in depth on how to use this. But it is, it's got a built-in reveal, which is this edge. And this is a 3 16 reveal. So you would put this up against your window and mark the reveal. Check out those videos for that. And then we'll move on to the smaller pouch. Okay, so we're back with a smaller pouch. I'll just um, show you the side. It has, you know, three bands here for whatever you want to stick in it. This is made for a knife. It's a knife pouch. And then you have the uh, places for whatever you want to store. And I'll go through what I put in there. Let's start with the channel locks. These are called channel locks. And that's because they lock into different positions. Um, mainly what I'll do with these is pull um, nails out. So I'll pull a board off. It may leave a brad nail uh, behind. And I'll just grab it. I will also take my five-in-one tool 
and I'll place it next to the nail sticking up. I'll grab the nail and then roll this back and pop out the nail. I'll use this to keep from messing up the drywall or marring a piece of wood or something like that. So that's the channel locks and you can go up. I've turned pipes with it and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I, I don't want to hear from the pros that say, well, you should never have uh, channel locks because you're a trim carpenter. Eh, bug off. I love them. Um, I have a old chisel that I use for, you know, prying up glue and um, kind of really sticky, hard um, uh, caulking and things like that. This thing right here, it's a um, pin snip. And essentially what I would do is if I had a nail sticking out of a piece of wood that I couldn't get out for whatever reason, then I would take this and put it over the nail and pop it like that. If I have a nail sticking out of the wood like that, I can go in here and pop that off and it'd be, it'll be flush with the wood. If I needed to, I could grab my, my punch and my hammer and just give that a little tug or a little pop and sink the nail down in there. So the knife, let's talk about the knife. This is an Olfa knife. Highly, highly, highly recommend these knives. Um, they have refillable blades that you can um, pop this out the other end and stick a new strip of blades into. This thing is incredibly sharp, but it is a great thing to have on your tool belt. A uh, little baby pry bar, like I showed you on the other one. It's just for finer detail. I have another Sharpie. I probably got 10 Sharpies somewhere in here. I have a pencil for rough marking. I chewed the, unfortunately, chewed the eraser off of there. Um, and then I have two pens that I buy. I buy these at the, at the dollar store. Um, by the way, this pencil, I rarely ever use that. I need to take it out. Um, I have a carpenter's pencil for marking things that are um, like on brick that I don't want to permanently mark with the Sharpie, but I'll mark that because it's it's a little bit more, or a lot more durable than this pencil. I buy these at the dollar store in packs of five, I think it is. It's a paper mate. It just has refillable lead in it, which also comes with it. And this is what I use for fine marking. I'm going to take a lot of flack on that one, I can tell. But anyway, you can buy the fancy ones, the graphites and all the other things you can see on Amazon. Fast cap. Check out their marking tools. They, they have some pretty cool stuff. And this is just uh, an extension uh, for an impact driver. So you would take your impact tool, whatever it is, usually a, like a, a driver bit, a T25, T50, and you stick it in there. Um, what I like about it is it has a, a really strong magnet in here. So when I get through using the impact driver, let's see if I have one in here. Yeah, I've got one in here. So this is a, a T20. It's got that star bit. We, you know, people call them star bits. But um, you would stick this in here, drill with it, and then when you're done, it's really hard to get out. So, but then if you press this, pull this back, it separates the magnet from the, it just comes right out. If you've ever been doing a home project and you drill into something, and then you pull it out, and instead of the bit coming with it, the bit stays in there like that. That's what this is for. It's um, it's really handy for that, and it's very difficult to get out when it's stuck in there. But that's that. So that's really all I have in this this tool belt. Um, and then we'll go on to the uh, rolling cart. So this is uh, an example of a rolling tool cart, or slang would be pack out like we talked talked about earlier this is from cobalt it's like 220 230 dollars and i got it on sale at christmas for 178 i believe it was uh, but it's a nice it's got uh, let me move around here it's got pretty decent wheels on it if you're going to buy one you want the wheels with a little bit of rubber on them um, milwaukee sells one it'll be triple that uh, and it's worth the quality. Milwaukee is, you know, a great product. 
I just couldn't afford it. That's the problem. So you stay within your budget. And my budget was 200 bucks. I thought first, instead of putting it on the table, I would just show you how it comes apart. Um, it rolls, of course. And then these little blue clips, every one of them is going to be different, depending on which manufacturer you buy from. But you just take this, these and pop these clips out, and it releases the, um, the compartment. And they have handles where you can carry them, which is really nice. So I'm going to put these on the table. I'm going to release each one, put it on the table, and then we'll go through it. So here's the first top compartment. I try to keep, obviously, things I'm going to need um, on the top. Now, when I show you these tools, again, uh, you make up your own mind to what you want to do with tools. Um, this is the microphone I'm using, so I'll get rid of that. This is an old combination square my dad had. I just keep it around because I like it. Um, this is a smaller combination square. comes in handy for certain things. In this video, I'm simply showing you the tools and giving you light examples. But I'm not here to currently, in this video, we're not here to learn each tool. Um, but look up combination square. It's a great tool. It works very similar to the um, multi-mark tool that we had earlier. Um, it does slide back and forth. You can take measurements with it, gauge measurements, things like that. Um, it's very handy. So we got that. In here is a um, stud finder. This one is by Franklin. It's... It, it's um, it's called Franklin Sensors. It's very expensive. I think I paid $130 for it. But what I like about it is when I'm doing baseboards, I can set this on top of the baseboard, click this button, and it will show me where the stud is. I don't know if you can see my finger moving back and forth. So it shows you the center of the stud and then the outside of the stud. So if you can imagine, and I'm getting ready to do a, another more realistic baseboard movie or a video. So you just slide it along the baseboard and when it lights up, pop it with a, uh, with a nail. Um, invaluable, saves so much time. This is just a, a set of extra oscillating blades that I keep. Uh, buy all these as packs off Amazon. You can get them, get them by the truckload. And I've got some notepads some extra nails. Uh, these are really cool. These are um, hinge spacers. So if you can see in the in the packaging, each one of these will space a hinge out 1 16th. And I rarely use these, but man, they come in handy, uh, especially on like a remodel job where the door wasn't hung properly. Um, and it, you know, I don't know if you can see that, but it'll take gaps out. We'll do a whole... Um, video on that if you if you in the meantime if you need a good door video there's a true master named gary katz at this is carpentry gary katz at this is carpentry and he is a absolute stud pro on anything to do with trim carpentry he's one of my huge heroes uh, i have a headlamp for working in the dark more pencils in there a little bit of wood filler if I ever need it, rarely ever use it. And then just, I call these emergency nails. I got out of frame again. Here's the wood filler. Here's the headlamp. And it just tucks away in, inside of there. These are spare pocket door parts. These are spare strike plates for doors. Extra black hinges. In case one gets damaged. So that is pack out number one. I'll uh, clear this out and we'll do pack out number two. Here's the second connecting compartment. Open that up, see what's in there. And um, I'm not super organized, but uh, this is a stair building guide from the, looks like the late 70s, early 80s that my boss gave me for homework. Um, this is a really handy tool for putting, if you watch my uh, uh, window trim for beginners, 
I use this, it's just a simple stapler. Works off an air compressor. Um, it's got the long staples. And I use that for putting my window frames together on, when, especially, you know, primarily on vinyl windows. So that comes in super handy. Got foam that I rescued from a vanity that we were putting in. And it comes in great. This is an 18 gauge DeWalt brad nailer. I've had it forever. Currently have two inch nails or two inch brads in there. Um, I would recommend that, you know, if you can afford it, because I'm on such a budget, I don't know what to recommend to people, but um, I would I would have an 18 gauge and a stapler. Um, this one, these are fairly expensive. You can look on the web and see what they cost. This one I bought off Amazon pretty cheap and I've been using it, but it doubles. It will take brad um, nails and it also takes staples. So you could save some money. Um, they're 18 gauge staples and of course 18 gauge brads. Um, I think the longest is two inches you can put in it down to uh, five eighths. And here, this thing's older than dirt. It is a 15-gauge angle finish nailer. And, um, of course, you know, if you're looking at gauges, 15 is a lot, lot thicker than an 18. And this is, this is not cool current technology here. <laughs> Matter of fact, if I could afford it, I wouldn't have anything that connects to an air hose. I would have all pneumatic, battery operator, gas powered, but those are major expensive and I haven't saved up enough in the budget for those. So I run everything off of air. Uh, all three of these are off air. Um, usually requires anywhere from 90 to a little over 110, 120 uh, pounds per square inch. And I'll show you my compressor in a minute, but um, man, it gets the job done. I use this on baseboards. Um, you know, as a homeowner, I used to use 18 gauge Brad Nailer uh, for like baseboards and stuff like that. But what I've learned in the trade uh, is that the 18 gauge will bend, they'll run out, meaning they'll they'll find a direction other than what you're wanting to shoot it, and they don't hold to abuse, you know, traffic, weight. Um, I would never use an 18 gauge brad nailer to hang a door. Um, it would only be a 15. But as of note, if you go to buy one, you're probably going to see the 16 gauge instead of the 15 because that's the popular, all the cool kids are doing that now. And, um, and that's what that is. And, and the angle helps me get into corners, obviously, in tight sp uh, spaces where this one is. And I use this to attach um, the trim to the door frame or the, if you, you know, look at my, uh, door trim or my window trim videos, uh, you'll see me using this quite a bit, and it's very, very nice. Um, we use a lot of pocket screws, pocket hole joinery. Again, check out my other videos for that. These are just big clamps I use to clamp things down. Got a couple of those. This is the Craig Jig, which is demonstrated in um, both those videos mentioned earlier. But essentially, you clamp it down and drill the pocket holes. The pocket holes are inserted. Um, this is my pocket hole grab bag. So in this one, I've got the pocket hole drill bit. I've got a secondary pocket hole jig. And I've got a standard half-inch wood block that I use a lot for uh, spacing things at a half an inch and trim, trim world. Um, pocket hole screws. Extra staples from a staple gun. More different sizes of pocket hole screws. I keep different samples of trim uh, that we use all the time here because for some reason these are never around when you need them. So I'll just keep a couple samples. Uh, we, in, our floor guys install a lot of 3 16th inch um, luxury vinyl planks. So I'll keep that to use for spacing my trim. And then I have a very old, um, very, very old Craig protractor. For, I still use it. I'll pull it out every now and then for a quick spring angle check. Um, 
So that's pretty much that. I have a little bottle of CA glue. I don't know how that got in there. But that's pretty much all that's in here. So it's all the guns, the clamps, uh, and then all my pocket hole stuff goes in here. So in my world, um, we do a, when we do trim, it almost always uses pocket holes. Um, we don't do a lot of the mitered casings that you see in other videos. So that's this. Let me get the, the third one out, and we'll shoot that. All right, this last compartment or container, whatever you want to call it, it's it's pretty darn simple. Um, there is a top drawer in here, or two top drawers. Um, something I would recommend for every homeowner, this is a digital tape measure. So sometimes you're going to be measuring crown, baseboard things, which is going to be a real pain or almost impossible in some cases, or very time consuming at least. Um, I won't go into how to work this. <coughs> Excuse me, this is a, a lovum, a lumba. Uh, I don't even know what to, how to pronounce it. Um, but they're on Amazon. Uh, check them out. Basically, you turn it on, you press once to have the laser come up. And once you direct the laser to the correct place, then you press it again. And it gives you uh, the total inches. Um, it'll also do feet. It does conversions. It does cumulative inches. So you could, uh, if you wanted to get, for instance, how much base, you're going to, let's just pretend you're going to replace all the baseboard in your home. Uh, and you need to quickly figure that out. You could just go into each room, uh, take your first measurement, hit the plus symbol here, and then go to your next wall and click and next wall and click. And it'll add all that up for you across your whole house. I think it holds 30 measurements until it runs out. Uh, but it's uh, for doing estimates, finding out how much board you need, or for actually taking measurements, it's excellent. Uh, so we'll put that over here on the table. Um, I have a uh, chalk string. Uh, when we do crown molding, we'll put a nail in the wall, pull this chalk out like that snap it again i'm not going to do a whole video on the, the chalk line look it up there's plenty of videos on them um, one thing to note the chalk comes in different colors blue is probably the most the least offensive uh, color meaning that blue is easy to get off uh, say drywall or um, things like that so you can snap this blue chalk line and then it kind of brushes off uh, if you get red, red is for a lot of like framers use it and people like that. Uh, red is almost impossible to get off. Um, I mean, it is possible, but it's a pain. Uh, so in this is a great tool here. It's by Klein and it's an angle finder. So you would turn this, let me just flip this down. You would turn this thing on. It's going to error out because I'm not holding it properly. And then... I could say, okay, I want to find out the angle of, you know, this uh, arm here. So I could hit power again. It's going to zero it out. Then I can take this guy and put it up here. And it tells me that angle is almost 90 degrees, actually. That's kind of weird. But it's it's great for um, finding angles of stairs. And um, I, it's got a big magnet. I can stick it on my miter saw and make sure i'm at 45 or 90 so that's a that's a great tool to have i highly recommend that for every homeowner D, i'm sorry every di wire pull this back open um another headlamp the other one was chargeable this one's battery operated only this is really a cool tool here um, again got this at fast cap i'm kind of a fast cap addict but if I pull this thing out, basically what it is, it's a long nose needle magic marker. And so I was setting handrails today. This is uh, a cutout of a handrail. And I got the handrail in position, marked the newel post. And then when you pop off this guy, it's got this great elongated uh, needle point to it. So if you can see, then I can stick this into the handrail and mark the newel post. There's a million ways you could do this. You could stick a drill bit in there and make a drill bit hole. And um, But I like it, it comes in really handy. So that's a handy thing. 
This is a, manu a manual angle finder. So you open it up like this, and you can put it against pretty much any object. So let's just say I want to find out this angle here. I can put this guy in here like that, put it up against this part, slightly tighten that, and then take that over to the miter saw and set the miter blade to the angle finder. Um, we'll go over uh, a digital angle finder a little bit later, but that's what that is. This is an excellent, uh, very excellent bit here. What this is is a self centering drill bit. The hinges have a slight depression uh, inside this groove. It's like a bevel, inside bevel. And this drill bit is specifically made to fit that bevel. And then when you drill, it produces the drill bit through the hole, but it keeps it from moving around. Um, because if you're trying to drill this, and I used to do it, you know, in home projects, I would try to find the center of that hole and drill it. And no matter how hard I tried, the hole would move here or around. This guy right here centers, it fits in there, press hard while you're drilling, comes out and drills perfect centered holes. And this is a, this is not very exciting, but I love it. This is a hinge knuckle bender the knuckle is the part of the hinge that's um, holds the pin and sometimes these need to be tweaked um, again gary katz at this is carpentry um, talks about bending hinges and i encourage you to go there but this is a knuckle bender and last but not least these are all my dewalt tools um, i've got the drill just a drill driver it's not an impact just standard old drill uh, oscillating tool 1001 uses for this uh, please look up how to use the oscillating tool on the web i haven't yet done a video on that uh, drill bits impact driver bits oh my god there's a hammer hammer um, jigsaw fantastic jigsaw it's a barrel it's called a barrel shape because it has a barrel handle and man that thing is fantastic love it gotta have tunes stereo speaker i guess orbital sander and every tool i'm showing you um highly highly recommended for the do-it-yourselfer everything i've showed you out of this bottom compartment so far highly recommend it um, this is an impact driver so what it does it has bits that fit into this um, connector and as it's drilling or driving um, and it meets resistance it will start vibrating or hammering uh, while it's drilling your screw into uh, the wood or whatever you're working on all right um, this is kind of a Oop, there's my little centering bit. And this is kind of a, I don't necessarily recommend this tool, but sure is nice to have. Uh, get into tight spaces, like if you're drilling in between two studs or you have a tight space you're working on at the house, um, you can get in there. It's right angle drill is what they call it. Um, you can also get a right angle drill attachment to go on the regular drill uh, for about 40 bucks. That's pretty much all in here. That takes you through the tool belt, uh, the pack out, or I should say correctly, the rolling toolbox with connectors. All right, guys, last but not least is the Bosch Angle Finder, the JM220 MF professional grade. Uh, the reason I get the professional grade is just for um, continued use. It's used on a daily basis and uh, for durability in that continued use. And open it up. It's got a nice pouch, soft, but it does protect it pretty well. And then here she is. Um, you have a lock and unlock button. 
So right now it's in the unlock position, meaning I can easily open it. The power button, two miter buttons, which I'll go in detail on the next video. This is just a simple overview of the digital angle finder. And um, then I'll switch to the floor. Okay, we're on the floor. We're going to measure this outside corner. I have not measured this corner yet. So we'll see what it is. And of course, by building standards, this should be a 90, outside 90. So I'm going to open it up. Turn it on. And the way I do it is open up just past the corner. And I find this uh, corner with the uh, digital square. And I just push it in until it's flat on both sides. And um, let's see, I'm going to tighten it down, lock it. And then we'll go up here and look at it. If I flip this button, it'll hopefully you can see that 89 degrees. If I flip this button here, the miter one, it then shows me I need to cut this angle on a 45.5 degree. And that's how it works. Same for inside, same for outside. I'll go in depth more on this in the next baseboard video that's getting ready to come up. In the meantime, I'm going to give you a few pictures of this house we're working on and show you what we got going. All right, we come in, we've got the uh, laundry in the uh, entryway from the garage. And then we've got uh, crown molding all the way around. Sorry for the lighting, it's the best I can do. Uh, and then that crown molding runs all the way down. We're going to do a crown molding video, but just so you know, from that corner way down there to this corner and to that return inside corner, all that is one piece that I glued together and installed as one piece. And it allows me to get really nice outside tight corners like that. Have a coffered ceiling. Uh, I'm still putting up. I've got a missing piece of crown there, but I've done all the finished grade crown up here. Uh, finished grade craftsman style trim at the top. Let me get a close up of that so you can see it. Uh, and then we've got it all wrapping all the way around the bay window. You run into all kinds of things that have to be fixed. Um, if you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but the uh, trim, the carpenters, unfortunately, didn't allow enough space for this trim. So we had to dye it into the wall, we call it. So if you look at it, uh, the piece on the left is a full 1x4, and then this is cut at a sharp 45 uh, all the trim is cut a sharp we find just dies into this uh, bay window. This is an office. Uh, we created a spot. There's going to be tempered glass sitting in there for the office. Yeah, there we go. There's a double finished grade trim door. And of course, we hang all these doors. Inside the office is a uh, oval trim. Uh, the homeowner wanted to dye the trim out into the crown molding in here. And so we did that and we've cut all these one by four pieces and installed the oval trim. The bay windows, the crown molding across the top, another eight foot door, and then we're back over at the uh, fireplace. And so we'll go across the uh, gangplank. Over here, up in the loft, we have another oval window. These are cathedral arches that we built in our shop. It's all kiln dried pine. It's doing some natural splitting. But these guys. I don't know how much they weigh a piece, but 
Um, we built them in the shop using a band saw and a miter saw and a huge table saw and then um, fitted them together for accuracy on the floor and then we brought them up in sections. I think there's nine sections to each one of these. There's three of them and they're gorgeous in my opinion. So, and then you walk forward to the edge of the loft or the balcony and you can see the uh, oval windows, I'm right on the edge here. Uh, three bank of windows, they're all done with uh, one piece trim, see if we can get a better view of that. And then there's the two windows with the eight foot door. And then back over there is the kitchen. There's the table saw. Hunk of junk, Roby. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm ashamed. Uh, top of the line, DeWalt 12 inch miter saw. I do have wings for it. Some guy the other day on YouTube said, you're not a pro, you don't even have wings on your miter saw. Well, I do have them. Um, they're currently at the job site, or I, I meant to bring them home. Let's see. Air hose. It's a six gallon, 150 PSI. A bunch of hose. I have a 100 foot hose, a 25 foot hose, a 50 foot hose. Uh, air compressors and air power tools are a pain in the fanny for a trim carpenter but it's the only money I got right now. This table, um, these sawhorses are actually really nice. They are tough built and they have a two by four that sits in a uh, holder just made for the two by four. You simply take your four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. I'm using a OSB sheathing, um, house sheathing, and you just place it on there on your two by fours um, and then go to town. Foam is very, very thick. So I use it, you can see all the cut lines. The blade will recess into the foam and that way I don't damage the table. So when I'm cutting with the track saw, I, I can take a piece of plywood or today I was cutting uh, wainscoting on it. And so I just lay the wainscoting down, uh, square it up with the um, track saw and the blade just cuts through the wainscoting or plywood or whatever you're cutting and it touches the foam rather than touching the uh, the table. I just want to say thank you very much for stopping by the channel for looking at this video. I'm pretty new at the YouTube thing so please stick with me. Uh, I'm getting better and better with each video. Um, if you have any suggestions uh, how I can improve or if you like something just leave a comment if you will. Um, I love answering the questions about different, you know, ideas and things people come up with. And the, the, the key thing and the true thing is, is I learn a ton from you guys who comment regularly and um, support the channel. So thank you so much again. Hopefully you found a, a tool or so in there that, you know, you think, hey, I'd like to, you know, add that to my tool arsenal. And um, so this is Dan thanking you again and uh, stop back by. We'll have new videos pretty soon.